Welcome to the customary artist update during these very historical times. In this video, I'm going to be drawing and painting a snapdragon. This is a little 5x7 canvas. I'm using a lot of golden heavy body acrylic colors, and I love these little things. These are all the technical bits for any of you artists or people wondering out there. And yes, it's sped up very, mu very much. That's using a black china marker, trying different kinds of mark making tools that I can see on this canvas. It was painted blue because I was going to do nice tulips on the background. I usually use a pink painted canvas, but anyway, that's what I'll be doing in this video. This is a stock image of snapdragons. I've taken a whole bunch of pictures of snapdragons at the Garfield Park Conservatory in Chicago in the past month, but they're all kind of blurry, especially the ones up close, because I need to get a better, better handle on my camera, and my camera might actually be on its last legs, because digital cameras' lenses actually can burn out. They lose their sensitivity over time, especially if you're pointing them in the bright Michigan overcast brightness. Any kind of brightness, digital cameras actually can die out and lose their sensitivity. So that could be part of it. Obviously, I'm blaming my equipment at this point instead of myself. Anyhow, for the artist update at this weird times, yes, I have had canceled shows canceled big ones. You may have heard that the Holland Michigan Tulip Time was cancelled and I was definitely looking forward to that and really going to hit them with all of my experience and knowledge of last year's. But fortunately or unfortunately I didn't get that far making too many tulips. I probably will anyway. I've got some free coloring pages, one of them of tulips. Those are free to download on my website. The link is in the description of course. So there's that. I'll probably be working on tulips for next year because why not? People will still be in the mood for tulips in May anyway, and you never know what will be open at that point. So between that show being cancelled, other shows being cancelled or postponed, it's a very interesting situation to prepare for. What am I going to prepare for? I've had two shows that I've applied for. I'm on the wait list, and I don't know if lots of people are on the wait list could be because of the virus, um, if it's because of my content, I'm guessing it's going to be my display over actually my paintings, and that's okay, I understand that. It is time to really upgrade to a decent display system with the tents and walls and things like that, but with these shows being cancelled, that may not be this year, so it's like everything for everybody is just slowed way down everything's about a year behind now, if that were the case. So we'll see about the shows. Two on wait lists. Did not get into this residency this year at Porcupine Mountains. And that's so obviously that's okay. What am I gonna do about it? What I did notice is that an awful lot more people shared about this residency this year. And I am a stingy person. If I see something I really want, I don't want to share it because then thousands of other people have also seen it. That's a horrible attitude to have because I would want to see it if I didn't know about it already. But I'm also wondering if everyone sharing about it really widened the pool. You know, I mean, it's like kind of like a lottery, kind of like a educated guess lottery of who will get in. But between not being in there, some wait lists, there's a lot of things up in the air right now with what project to go after, what to be postponed, what to go for next. The nice thing is, at least I know for the residency and I can apply to more art shows for that. It's not too late yet. And there are other shows even during the same dates as the other waitlisted shows that I can accept. So it's not completely up in the air, it's just all about and since those shows were cancelled and we are all currently stuck at home, I should be making a lot more fun videos, right? You'd think. Because I'm an artist at home, with my studio at home, it's very nice, and I can also work from home for my day job, I don't actually have more extra time. I am very, very lucky that way. I don't have to have extra time. I can use it all and really put more effort into different projects. That I'm lucky that my products 
never really expire with paintings. So I can just get better at it and practice and stockpiling for years down the road. Christmas next year, yes I mentioned it even this early. But it will pick up again eventually and now's the time to make stock. The other thing I can do right now is work on my online store, which I have been talking about for months, if not years. Now for you artists out there, I'm using Square, the same Square that you swipe cards for at shows. They've also got online stores attached to Weebly, which I happen to use for my website. It's not the best website, and I know it. It's kind of like the point-and-shoot version of a camera, rather than the DSLR that you have all the features you can tweak yourself. And I partially did it on purpose, because I would rather concentrate on painting, rather than all of the technical bits of a website. And I'm lucky that Square bought them, or they're integrated somehow, and I use my Square. Square, if you're listening or you ever get hold of this, and Artist 2, it is not the most intuitive. I feel like there's three different places where you can put in items as inventory. None of them are the same. They're hard to get to. It is not streamlined very well. There's different different way of giving variations for each one. Um, different options. Not variations, that is technical term for Square. But I hope, I think it will get better over time as they work out the online store thing. It's not the most streamlined process right now, but I do like how it will sync up so I don't have to like disable my store or go through it later. If I do an art show, it'll be right there and they don't charge extra, extra, like a uh, four letter online shop does that we won't mention right now. Everyone's been moving off of Etsy anyway. So, I've been trying to put things online. Uh, I've been trying to put things cost effectively online. I can't sell a $2 magnet online because it will cost me like $7 in time just to write a description for it. So I've been doing magnet sets and little paintings that I can ship. I bought a postal scale. So yes, this small local artist is open for business. Shipping from home. When our online store gets up and running, we're talking about having a virtual art hop so everybody in this area and everyone not in this area can see an art hop coming up April 3rd, I believe it is. They're working on getting Facebook events with rotating artists and videos and things going through that. So my goal is to have an all working online shop up. It's been long enough, partially procrastination, some photography issues, just getting all those things in a P.O. box for privacy. Also very important artists out there and to all the fans and art collectors. Also important. So yes, little things, little tiny shippable things, magnets. I'm um, working on some greeting cards because that still involves a trip to Office Max for me right now, which is not going to happen. So I'm working with what things I have right now, using the magnet bits and the prints. Lots of little canvases, and we shall see what happens. So April 3rd, I'm going to have, let's say that, let's, right now, I'm going to say that right now, let's meet a launch date for a tiny little online shop, and you can see some cool things at Art Hop that night on Facebook. Again, links will be down below. So here's my little Snapdragon Dragon's painting. I'll be using that for greeting cards coming this summer, and thanks for watching.